One of my personal favorite characters inside of the entire Sonic series is Silver the Hedgehog. From having a really cool story about time traveling to having really awesome abilities with his psychokinesic powers, Silver really had it all to be a really big main character or a huge part of the series moving forward after the events of 06. But unfortunately for our futuristic hedgehog, 06 was reviewed horribly and ended up being an absolute dumpster fire. Sorry if I'm putting it harshly there. But after the backlash of 06, it really seemed like Sega just never gave Silver a chance ever again. With Silver rarely ever making any appearances inside of any Sonic media or even getting merchandise for that fact. It's pretty rare to see anything related to Silver outside of the comics. But that's what got me thinking. I wanted to take a look back and take a look at every appearance that Silver the Hedgehog has ever made inside of any Sonic game or comic. And what I wanted to do is throw them all inside of a tier list and rank every single Silver that we've ever gotten inside of any of those pieces of media. And truly see if there was any hidden gems out there that I potentially missed along the way. And potentially even see if Silver wasn't as forgotten as I thought he was. So within that tier list, I'm going to be ranking every single Silver along the way. I'm going to only have two rules for this tier list. The first one is I'm not going to be including any characterizations from the mobile games. As one, these games don't really have any story or backstory to add for Silver, but two, all the abilities that he uses inside of these games have already been seen before in previous appearances. And three, I don't really play a bunch of the mobile games, so I feel like I'd be too uneducated to know about anything about these Silvers. So if you think a mobile characterization should be on this list, let me know where you would put it on the tier list in the comments below. And the second rule that I'm going to be making is trying not to focus so much on gameplay. Obviously a big portion and going to be the starting one that I'm going to be ranking is going to be 06 Silver. So yes, we obviously get 06 is bad and its gameplay was horrible and Silver is very held back because of that. So I'm going to be trying to look past that and focus more on who he is as a character, his ability, his backstory, his friendships, and all of that. So with all of that out of the way, let's rank every Silver the Hedgehog. And kicking things off with Silver's debut game of Sonic 06. Silver's characterization within 06 is personally actually one of my favorites. While we see in future comics and games that Silver is more seen as a goofball, in 06 he is definitely taken as more of a character with determination and optimism. And while he definitely can be super naive at times, especially when falling for Mephiles' lies and almost killing Sonic, you can really see his character progress throughout this story. From being extremely frustrated and feeling hopeless about not being able to defeat or seal Iblis, to being determined and finding a plan to save his future, these are truly some of the best moments with Silver. And you can also include some of his best moments being alongside his best friend Blaze, and them kind of having somewhat of a big sister little brother relationship. And you can definitely see Silver relying on Blaze a lot for all of his decisions that he makes inside of 06, and also a big reason why Silver is able to save his future at the end of the day with having Blaze by his side. And Silver definitely taking more towards an extroverted personality inside of 06 of disliking being alone and loves being around others, and even when he's split up from Blaze in the future, Blaze saying this. I hope Silver is okay. He's pretty insecure when he's alone. It's truly a shame that we never really got Silver and Blaze again inside of a mainline Sonic game, as I truly think this is one of the best duos we've ever received in Sonic, and I'd love to see it come back. And eventually at the end of the game when Blaze passes on, you can truly just see how sad Silver is at the end of the story. While at a time where you would think Silver would be extremely happy to finally seal away Iblis and see the light shining on his destroyed city, you actually see Silver be somewhat sad and lost. You can really see just how much Silver cares for his friendship with Blaze and how scared he is to travel within this world alone. I think it's really great to see Silver have such a passion and love for his friends and will truly stop at nothing to ensure their safety. Like I said earlier, Silver isn't ever really seen as a serious individual again inside of the games, and instead is more seen as a goofball these days and has very much a golden retriever type of energy. But inside of 06, I really enjoy his seriousness and his optimism, but also being extremely innocent inside of 06. Some of Silver's best moments is actually when he first goes to the past and him saying, This is so unbelievable. Now, I must fight for the future. It truly makes you really feel for the character that is Silver of him reacting to the world like this after seeing what the world was supposed to look like in his future. 
And I think this is a big turning factor for his goals and what he's truly trying to fight for. And he'll truly stop at nothing to ensure that his future could potentially look like this someday. And fast forwarding to the end of the world story, Silver really pulls through in the end for each of these characters. When it really seems like all hope is lost being trapped inside of the void of space and time, and especially after Sonic's death, Silver expresses that there has to be another way, and there has to be a way to stop Solaris. And this truly has his optimism really shining through to not only motivate, but help everyone fight for a better future. And this is truly why, at the end of the game, Silver is really the MVP of 06. But stepping away from story and moving into more of Silver's abilities, when it comes to abilities in 06, I think that this game showcases his psychokinesic powers the best so far. His psychokinesic powers have a really cool aura around him in cutscenes and make him look absolutely unstoppable and even rivaling Sonic in battle. Sega does an extremely good job with Silver inside of these boss fights but also cutscenes just to show how strong Silver genuinely is. And I think that this is how he should be treated in future Sonic media. Silver should be one of the strongest characters out of the entire cast. And this is also the only game that Super Silver has ever made an appearance from, so there's definitely some bonus points for that as well. With having some pretty rad abilities is seen inside of the Solaris fight with Silver. But with that being said, I really enjoy Silver in 06. And if Silver was to ever be playable or just simply in another mainline game again, I'd really like for Sega to take a lot of inspiration off their old work in Sonic 06. But with 06 Silver, where I'm going to rank him is actually going to be a confident top of A. Moving into the Rival series, this is Silver's first appearance since 06, so within the story of the first installment, you can see Silver travel to the past, as he's in pursuit of the interdimensional criminal known as Eggman... You know what? I'm not gonna make the same mistake I made in my shadow ranking video, so I'm just gonna refer to this man as Eggman N. But anyway, Silver is looking for Eggman N to find him after discovering he has a camera allowing him to turn people into cards. What's really interesting is since the events and memories of 06 were completely wiped away, this is actually the first interaction Silver canologically has with each of these characters. So while Rival's story isn't really all that interesting, it is kind of interesting to see Silver reintroduce himself to each of the playable characters inside of these games. And basically with Silver kind of starting fresh inside of the entire story, this actually allows him to gain more friendships. In Rivals 2, you see each of the playable characters gain a partner, and what's really cool with Rivals 2 is you would be kind of unexpected to see Silver with anybody that isn't Blaze. But instead, Sega actually decided to pair Silver with Espio. And let me tell you, this duo is not one I'd expect to love as much as I do. But I need this back in another Sonic game. This duo just works. And I'll get more into why I appreciate this duo so much when I talk more about the IDW comics. But I think on paper in Rivals 2, this duo is definitely the weirdest sounding. When this game was initially announced, I thought there was no way that Silver and Espio could truly work together as their personalities were so different and both of them had separate friendships that would seem like they just wouldn't be a pair. With Espio having the Chaotix and Silver kind of having his best friend's Blaze, I don't really understand why Sega decided to do this. And I mean hell, after Rivals, the IDW comics, and Team Sonic Racing with Silver having more of a connection to Vector in that game, I think Silver is more of a chaotic than Knuckles these days, which is kinda sad. But with that being said, when it comes to abilities inside of the Rivals games, there isn't much to be said about them, as all of these characters have pretty much the same abilities and run the same exact way. The only thing that's really different about abilities is just sometimes their main abilities look visually different, and while Silver's is cool, it doesn't do anything actually different inside of the gameplay, so honestly it isn't as cool as you would think it is. But I'll show a clip on screen so you guys can see what that ability looks like inside of the game. But when it comes to Rival Silver, while his abilities are extremely lackluster inside of this game, we do gain a really cool duo and something that I'd like to see more of, but also a lot of character progression which is kind of surprising for this game. Of him just simply reintroducing himself to everyone inside of these games, I'm actually going to stick Rival Silver inside of B rank. Next up being Sonic Colors on the DS. And man, what a weird game to feature characters like Shadow, Blaze, and even Silver. 
Especially when the console version on the Wii didn't even feature any characters besides Sonic, Tails, and Eggman. But nonetheless, getting a silver appearance is just simply a win in my book, so we'll take it. But silver is only here in colors inside of cutscenes, where silver is looking to ride a ride inside of Sweet Mountain called The Future. But silver saying to Sonic that he wouldn't recommend riding the ride as it isn't anything like the future at all. But instead, his future is actually much happier. It's actually really weird to think some good would actually come out of a short cameo like this in Colors DS. But this actually warms my heart a lot to hear Silver's future is actually doing extremely well, especially after all the pain and destruction that he went through inside of 06. And even seeing Silver alongside Blaze again is always heartwarming as well. How or even why Blaze or Silver is here is honestly a mystery and kind of a weird thing to throw inside of a DS port of a game, but I actually ended up really enjoying the short moments we actually do get with Silver inside of this game, so I'll give it a B rank. Why not? Moving into the rival battle fight for Silver in Sonic Generations. While Silver is only ever featured inside of a rival fight and a few cutscenes in the end of the game, there really isn't much for Silver in Generations. While he doesn't have a lot of dialogue and doesn't really appear all that much, Silver's abilities in the rival fight kinda go crazy. So much so that Silver actually has two unique psychokinesic abilities inside of this game, with Sega introducing a Abilities like Psycho Knife and Meteor Smash both being a really damn cool abilities for Silver. And I think if Silver were to ever become playable again, these would be both amazing options to add to his moveset. The Psycho Knife has actually already been added into Chaos X's Project 06, and while that is a fan game, it actually works extremely well inside of that setting for P06. And generally, it's just a really cool addition done by Chaos X. And Meteor Smash is a pretty damn big attack, so I can see it as more of an ultimate attack done by Silver to take out really strong opponents. But overall, Generation's story is pretty mediocre in my opinion. And I think I'll die on the hill of saying that characters like Shadow, Knuckles, and even Silver could have helped out in the Time Eater fight. There's no reason that they couldn't have helped similar to Heroes or 06 instead of just floating on a rock cheering on Sonic, telling him to watch out for homing shots for the millionth time. But for generations, while I do really enjoy his new abilities, this silver doesn't have a lot to base my rank off of. And I genuinely feel like that he could have done more in the end, and I'm gonna put this silver inside of C rank. Next up being Sonic Forces. And boy, where do I start with Sonic Forces? As a whole, it's pretty criticized, and to be fair, for a good reason. But maybe a bit too much. This is Silver's second mainline game appearance, and Boy did they butcher my boy. What's crazy is they gently destroy Silver with one line. One line, and you already know what I'm talking about. I'm an optimist, but I'm also a realist. Isn't that Silver's thing, is being optimistic? Like, Silver's future is a fiery hell with all hope lost. He still continued to fight and try to find a way to defeat Iblis. Sure, he was frustrated, and sure, he felt hopeless at times, but he continued to fight until his mission was complete. This silver just ruins anything of the idea of silver being a symbol of hope or optimism. And in this game, silver is just seen as weak. Don't get me wrong, when I'm referring to Silver getting absolutely wrecked by Infinite, I know Infinite is extremely strong, especially when having the Phantom Ruby. But Silver just doesn't even stand a chance against Infinite. I mean, at least Sonic can put up somewhat of a fight early on. Silver's just kind of there and makes sure Sonic's okay. Sonic, you okay? I mean, what are you gonna do about it? But ultimately, the whole reason that Silver is even making another mainline appearance is apparently to warn Knuckles about the future of Eggman taking over. But other than that, Silver is just kind of here, I guess. That's really all it feels like, like there isn't anything special about Silver in this game at all, and even when he's fighting, he's just fighting on the ground level. And I think that's where a big part of where forces fail when it comes to story is having the likes of Silver and the ultimate life form fighting on ground level and not doing more important tasks. And genuinely this game doesn't add anything to his character, so I have no other place to put this other than D. When it comes to Team Sonic Racing, Silver pairs up with the team of Blaze and Vector. Somewhat of a weird pairing of adding Vector to this team, but it could be worse. Team Sonic Racing is actually the only racing game where Silver is actually part of the story of the game. Well, I mean, again, he's just 
kind of there, I suppose. But in general, the moments of dialogue he actually does have in this is the beginning of Silver's character starting to change. Long gone is the days of 06 of Silver being a serious, optimistic character, and instead we have Team Sonic Racing's Golden Retriever in Silver. Look, I understand that this game probably wasn't seen in the eyes of Sega as a serious story game, but making Silver a clueless goofball is not the look I want for Silver. I mean, just listen to his interactions with Sonic in this game. I'm so gonna own you, Silver. Okay. No, you're supposed to say, in your dreams, Sonic. In your dreams, Sonic. Too late. The moment's passed. In general, I do love the idea of pairing up Silver and Blaze again, and Sega still wanting to put them together, but overall, this is the worst Silver to date, and we'll go at the bottom of D rank. So we have officially covered all the Silvers in the games that have a story or is involved in the story mode in some way. So for these other games that Silver has made an appearance in, there isn't much to base these versions of Silver off of besides design and abilities. So I'm going to do somewhat of a speed round for each of these characters, so with that being said, let's begin. First up, Secret Rings. Silver is only ever playable inside of the game party mode and is just kind of there for some filler characters for this mode. Nothing different about his design or abilities and he's just kind of there, again. So D rank. The Mario and Sonic series. All there really is to say is the Sonic Riders series. Silver being playable in both Zero Gravity and Free Riders. While this design isn't super drastic like some of the other playable characters inside of this game, I do like the subtle change to his shoes and also wearing his Arc of the Cosmo on his hip. And he also has a fitting extreme gear board in both Zero Gravity and Free Riders, so I'll give him a solid B. And finishing off the speed round with Sonic and the Black Knight where Silver appears in the game as Sir Galahad inside of the co-op mode, where he has an amazing looking design and personally is one of the best looking sets of armor and sword out of all of the knights featured in this game. And also the main ability used in this mode looks insane, which I believe is called the Psychic Surge. At least that's what it's called inside of Force's Speed Battle, but surprisingly a really cool characterization of Silver and belongs in B. Alright, and that's it for the speed round and the games. For the next few characterizations, I'm going to be ranking all of the comic versions of Silver. While I do enjoy both the Archie and IDW comics, I'm not going to be explaining the entire story in both these series, as we'd be here all day explaining everything that happens inside of the story of the Archie and IDW comics. But with that being said, I'm going to start with Archie Silver being arguably the strongest Silver to date, with having some crazy battles with the likes of Enerjack, which again, you could also make the argument saying he's the strongest villain we've ever seen inside of the Sonic series. I mean, it literally calls him that. The really cool part about this Silver is just how much backstory we actually end up getting for Silver inside of these comics. You get to see a lot more of his future, but also some of the other characters who were still around during these dark times. And some of these characters even being mentors to Silver. And helping him learn about his future and everything that happened, but also teaching him on how to be a hero. Silver's story is extremely different inside of the Archie comics than it is in the games. Where instead of trying to hunt down the Iblis Trigger, Silver actually tries to hunt down the supposed traitor in the Freedom Fighters. But while hunting down this alleged traitor, you can see Silver be extremely naive and quickly jumping to conclusions about who this alleged traitor is. And this even upsets a lot of the Freedom Fighters, including Sonic who actually attacks Silver after accusing a fellow freedom fighter. And while I don't love how Silver is that naive, I don't mind him trying to constantly fight for a better future, and simply just be a symbol of justice. And he's also just extremely optimistic about saving his future as well. And I think Archie genuinely does a good job at writing Silver, but when the writers change, Silver did end up kind of getting somewhat put on the shelf of it. With changing his backstory to match the 06 and Rival games, but only ever being used in the comics with the collaboration with Mega Man. I hate to keep saying it over and over again, but Silver was later on forgotten about again. What seemed like a main character really ended up just being a side character again. While I'm not a huge fan of how they wrote him in the end, I do really enjoy his personality, his story, and overall just his abilities early on in the comics. And most of my ranking is going to be based off of what his early days looked like inside of the Archie comics. And with that being said, he deserves a strong A rank. Now, we're finally down to the last Silver the Hedgehog. Here's the list of what I've come up with so far, and let me know if you agree or disagree with any of my thoughts and feeling towards each of these silvers so far. But with that being said, the best Silver the Hedgehog to date is none other than IDW Silver. 
What IDW does so right with Silver is he takes 06 Silver who is optimistic and serious and combines him with the present Silver who is more goofy. That's what IDW Silver is. And I think it's perfect for this character the way that Ian Flynn has decided to write Silver has been the best to date. Not only does Silver feel like he has his personality of the older appearances back, but he also feels like a main character again. And he was truly the MVP of the Metal Virus. Without Silver during this arc, I don't think our heroes would have made it out alive. And even within the story, Silver continues to fight for his future that has been polluted and people living in fear every single day due to the events of the Metal Virus. But thanks to Sonic and Silver saving the day at the end of the Metal Virus, Silver's future ended up being saved. But this leaves Silver who is actually just genuinely happy, but also feels lost in a good way. Because there is no danger left in the future, but also the present. But my favorite part about this Silver isn't the fighting or the cool abilities. While Super Silver returning and Silver saving the day is a huge bonus, and genuinely makes him feel like an important character again, I really enjoy Silver's downtime of him seeing his beautiful restored future. Or even seeing him stick around to find his love of gardening or even talk to Blaze more often. Something that he's truly never really had time to do or even think about. And even his deep talks with Espio are great. Silver expresses his feelings of feeling lost and not knowing what to do in his life. Because for the first time, Silver hasn't had a goal in mind or a future to save or a present to save. But Espio just being there as a friend and truly bringing this duo back was an awesome move by IDW and just simply Espio telling Silver to chill out. Espio being there to help out with some of Silver's problems and letting him talk but also helping him with some of his mental health issues is amazing and one of the best parts in the IDW comics. Like I said back in the Rivals ranking, this duo is just so great and I love Espio and Silver together as a team and simply just as friends. And this is by far the best way that they have written Silver out of any piece of Sonic media so far. IDW just truly does Silver right and justice for this character, who has been truly put on the shelf and simply forgotten about again and again. I can't wait to see what's in store for this character in the future if given another chance in the games or even the IDW comics. As in the hands of Ian Flynn, I think Silver is in really good hands. Like I said before, Silver is one of my favorite characters in the entire series from personality to design to abilities. He's just a great character. But let me know what you guys think of my ranking in the comments below. What did you guys disagree with or what did you guys agree with? I'd love to hear your opinions on our heroic time-traveling hedgehog. But with that being said guys, I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.